What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to explain unexplainable models in machine learning using Lime in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to explain the decisions of machine learning models using Lime in Python today. And Lime stands for Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations. And the name already says what exactly a line is or what exactly a line does. It explains the decisions of models locally, of unexplainable models locally, because explainable models, they just tell you how they work. For example, decision trees just tell you exactly how they make decisions, whereas something like a random forest classifier, which is, of course, made of decision trees, but it itself is not a decision tree, doesn't have a clear explanation on how it gets to the conclusion, to the decision, to the prediction. So what Lime does is it explains these predictions locally and it's also model agnostic. So you can use it on basically any model, on support vector classifiers, on random forests, on whatever you want. So we're going to learn how to do this in this video today. And for this, we're going to have to install uh, a couple of packages or actually uh, three packages. First of all, of course, pip or pip3 install. First of all, of course, scikit-learn. Then, of course, also matplotlib for visualizations and also Lime, so L-I-M-E. Now, this video is going to be focused on the practical aspect of Lime. So we're going to use it. I basically told you what it does, but we're not going to go into the theory behind Lime, so how it actually works. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section down below. I can make a theoretical explanation of Lime as well. But today we're going to focus on just using it in Python, on using the package in Python. All right, so we're going to start with an explainable model first. So we're going to ignore a line for a second just to show you how we can explain, for example, a decision tree classifier. So we're going to start by saying import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. We're going to say from sklearn.datasets, we want to import the breast cancer data set. And then from sklearn.tree, we want to import a decision tree classifier. And uh, actually, we also want to import plot tree because we want to visualize the decision tree. Uh, and then from sklearn.model selection, we want to import a train test split. So we're going to say that the data is going to be equal to load breast cancer, and then x and y are going to be equal to data, data, and data target. So you can print this to see what it looks like. It's basically just some um, already normalized and standardized uh, data, I think, here. So the input parameters and then the classification. Uh, I think that, uh, what was it? I think I, note, I wrote it down here. Uh, I'm not sure if zero stands for malignant or for benign. Let me just see that. Print data and then just uh, target names. There you go. So a one says that the tumor is benign and zero says it's malignant. So we want to have a one op uh, optimally. But we actually only care about the accuracy here and about explaining how we get to the conclusion. So let's go ahead and say that we want to have a tree classifier and this is a decision cla uh, tree classifier and we say tree fit on x or actually we need to do the train test split first. So x train x test y train y test is equal to train test split x and y with a test size of 0.2. So 20% of the data is going to be used for testing. We're going to train the decision tree classifier on x train and y train. Um, and then, you know, we can score it if we want to. So we can say print tree classifier score x test and y test. Now, of course, you don't want to explain a model that doesn't work. So you want to make sure that the model actually produces uh, good results. 92% accuracy is fine for a 50 50 guess, basically, if you don't have any information. So it's okay. We want to explain now how this model works. Now, in the case of a decision tree classifier, which is an inherently explainable model, it's quite simple, we just plot the decision tree. So we can actually see exactly how the decision is made. So we can say PLT figure, uh, let's do figure size is going to be equal to 2010. And then we're going to call the plot tree function for the tree classifier. We're going to say filled equals true. The feature names are going to be the data dot or actually the data 
feature names like this. The class names are going to be the target names. So what we just printed malignant and benign. Uh, so data tar get names. And we want to also say rounded equals true. So let me just make this a bit smaller so you can see the line plot tree classifier field equals true feature names and class names are feature names and target names and then rounded equals true. And then we just say plt show. So this is all you need to do to explain a decision tree classifier without any line without anything else. Uh, you can see Oh, actually, I cannot zoom in. Uh, but you can see basically what this is. And maybe you can make this larger, maybe you can export this as an image to see exactly what happens. But if you look at this, and we're not going to analyze now the decision making here, but basically, you can see here, we have a feature and we have the um, the boundary. Now, I, I think you're not going to see this in the video. But basically, it says worst concave points, less or equal to 0 0.142. And then you go left or right, depending on whether that's the case or not. And then you basically and at the bottom, you have class is benign, class is benign, class is malignant. So you basically just analyze the features, you go left, right, left, right, until you get to an endpoint until you get to a leaf node, and then you have class benign or class malignant. So the decision tree itself is the explanation, it is inherently explainable, we don't need something like line. Now, if we choose to use something else, if we choose to use a forest classifier, so a random forest classifier, in this case, we would say from sklearn ensemble, we want to import a random forest classifier. And we're just going to, uh, we're going to remove all of this here, of course. And here we're going to say forest classifier score, I can do this and I get actually 97% accuracy. So even better. Uh, but now I don't have a way to explain the decisions. Now what I can do is I can print a feature importances. So I can do something like uh, dictionary zip, and then forest classifier dot feature names in and forest classifier dot uh, feature importances, I can do that to get the feature importances. Oh, of course, we don't have the feature names here, because they are part of the data, they're not part of the x. So the forest classifier doesn't know the features. So actually, we need to say, uh, data, and then feature names. So yes, this works, we can see the feature importance for the individual features, how important are they, and then of course, we can sort this, but we cannot explain exactly how the decision is being made, we cannot explain the individual decisions that the forest classifier makes. So what we can do now is we can use lime in order to make these explanations. So what we do is we say, uh, down here, from lime import lime, uh, lime tabular, like this. And then we can use a lime explainer to explain individual decisions. So what we can do is we can say, down here, explainer equals lime tabular, lime tabular explainer. And here now we need to pass a couple of things. First of all, the training data, which is going to be of course, x train. Uh, then the feature names, which are as we know, data feature names, then we need the class names, which are as we also know, target names. And then we need the mode and the mode is going to be classification, not regression, classification, there you go. So that is our explainer. Now what we're going to do with the explainer, um, is we're going to make explanation for individual instances. So we cannot explain the random forest in general, it's a local model. So we need to explain this particular decision, why was this classified as malignant or benign. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say for i in range 0 to 20. So we're going to look at or actually, I can just say 20. Um, we're going to look at the individual instances, the first individual, the first 20 individual instances, and we're going to see how the prediction is being made. So we're going to print here, first of all, the correct classification is benign, if y test i uh, is one. So just like that, else malignant. So this is the ground truth. This is the actual true classification. And then we're going to print also uh, what the classification uh, is 
or actually we're going to print we're going to print the features so that we can see them. So we're going to do actually a dictionary zip and then data feature names. And then we're going to have also x test i. So the idea of this is that we basically have the values, but the values are not uh, labeled with feature names. So we're just zipping together the feature names and the feature values so that we, we can see what the values actually are just for ourselves in the console. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say instance index is equal to I and then we're going to say instance um, is equal to or actually we can, can just go ahead and say I directly. So instance is equal to x test i, and then we're going to explain, we're going to say exp. So the explanation is going to be equal to explainer dot explain instance. And what we pass here is we pass the data row. Data row is going to be equal to the instance. So to x test i, um, or actually, we can do this here also x test i like this. I don't know why I wrote it that complicated. Um, data row equals x test i and then we're going to say predict function, this is important predict function is going to be equal to and this now has to be a predict probability function. So it cannot be just a predict, it has to be predict underscore prop a, it has to return probabilities. Uh, it doesn't support just predict. So if you have something like a linear support vector classifier, I recommend you watch my video on calibrated classifiers, you can take something like a linear support vector classifier and turn it into something that returns probabilities. If you put a or if you train a calibrated classifier on top of it. However, the random forest classifier actually has uh, probabilities already. So we're going to say forest classifier predict prop a like this. And then the number of features to use, you can also say only use 10 features, we're going to use all 30 features here. So we're going to use all of the features. Uh, and then all we have to do is we have to say figure is equal to explanation. Actually, let's call this explanation. I like to have the full name explanation dot uh, as pie plot figure. And then plt type layout so that we can see everything and plt show. So this is going to give us the graphical explanation for every single instance uh, for, for the first 20 instances. So we can run this. And you can see now, this is the Lyme explanation. So what you see here, the correct classification is that it's malignant. So this is a malignant tumor. Now, how can you read this, you can read it like that. You have the features, and you can see what is the case. So what you see on the left is the case, the worst concave points are a, a greater than 0 0.16. The worst area is greater than uh, 1077, the worst perimeter is greater than 125, and so on. So these are what is the case for this particular instance, what you see on the right is how this affects the classification, the target classification here is benign. So when something goes to the left and is red, it's, um, it's basically against benign. So it's, it's basically speaking against benign. So these things here are indications for the two more being malignant. Now this here is indication for the tumor being benign, but you can see that most of the features here say that it's a malignant tumor. So that is the explanation. And maybe we should actually um, also print we should also print the model classification. So the classification. And then we're going to say, uh, just model or just a uh, forest CLF dot predict x test i and I think we're going to have to put some square brackets around this. Uh, there you go. So this actually classifies it as zero. Okay, it seems like it does it the other way around. Okay. Uh, but basically, you can see the explanation here is like this. So you have basically Oh, no, actually, it's it's correct. I just No, it's correct. Okay, sorry. So zero actually means uh, zero actually means uh, malignant and one means benign. So let me restart this. And now we're gonna, gonna explain this. Okay, so there you go. So um, local explanation for class benign, meaning 
the class, the correct class is benign. The classification is also one, so benign. And you can see that it's benign because of this. This worst parameter being less than 84.09 says that this is probably benign. Worst radius uh, less than 13 says it's probably benign and so on. So you can see most of the features, most of the evidence that we have says that this is benign. This is why our model classified this as benign. So we can close this, you can see this is also benign. Much evidence for it being benign, very little evidence for it being malignant. And that's also the correct classification. Um, this one also very clearly benign. This one very clearly malignant. So we also get the correct classification here. Uh, now this is not always going to be accurate. So if I try this for long enough, we're going to see uh, a misclassification at some point, I think we saw one uh, earlier when I just closed the window. Um, because the model, of course, doesn't have 100% accuracy, it has 97% accuracy. So for some instances, it's going to be confused, and you're going to see a lot of red and a lot of green bars, and it's not going to be very uh, confident in its decision, which is also good, because then you can see, and I think this is actually now a misclassification, because the correct classification uh, is malignant, but our classification is one, which is benign. And you can see that um, it classifies this as benign, because there's, I guess, more evidence here on the right side. But you can also see that it's not an obvious thing. So you can also use this as a sort of confidence measure. Um, but yeah, this is how you explain the decisions of a model locally using Lime. You don't explain the full model, you explain why this particular decision was made. You have the evidence on the left, you have how the evidence influences the decision. And then you can print also the classification and also the correct class uh, to see whether the, the classification is correct. And you can also interpret the results as a confidence measure. So if you see a lot of green, or a lot of red and uh, very little of the other color, it's a very confident decision. Whereas if it's very mixed, and you get a decision, it's a uh, more like a guess. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.